Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Viking Genetics webinar this evening, wherever you may be located. The time has gone seven o'clock, so uh, we will get started without any further ado. My name's Jim Bruce. I'm the country manager for Viking Genetics um, in Australia and New Zealand, and um, I'll be your host this evening. Uh, a warm welcome to those who are joining us across Australia. Uh, I suspect there may be a couple across the ditch in New Zealand. Um, and also we have some of our special guests from uh, Denmark joining us as well. Uh, the webinar tonight is um, rather exciting for us. It's that time of year where we have a brand new catalogue uh, to hit the road. We have the SIA summaries just gone uh, a few weeks ago uh, here. Um, with uh, data gene and uh, we've got exciting new bulls across the three breeds viking jersey viking red and viking holstein and we're excited to share it with uh, with customers and uh, and potential customers so we welcome one and all i'd like to um welcome first of all uh, our our um special guests and now i've lost control of the slide Let me see if I can get the slide back. There we are. Thank you very much. Um, so as I say, I, uh, my name's Jim Bruce. I'm the host uh, this evening. Joining me here in Australia, Eric Thompson's our Senior Breeding Advisor and Account Manager. And anyone who's familiar with Viking will surely have uh, heard of Eric uh, through the, the 12 or 13 years that he's been with the organisation here in Australia. Also our Breeding Advisor from Western Victoria, Darren Maloney will be joining us um, in uh, in the presentation as well. Special guests uh, beaming in from uh, Denmark. Hannah Driscoll is the product manager for Viking Holstein. Helke Weismer is product manager for Vi uh, Viking Red. And Peter Larson is the product manager uh, for the Jersey program. And uh, we welcome them all and uh, we thank them for their involvement. A little bit of housekeeping, if I could. Um, before we get started, the webinar is being recorded and it will be available uh, to all participants at the conclusion via email. Um, all webinar participants are muted, so you can't speak to us, you, but we can speak to you. And that's probably a dangerous situation with salespeople on the screen, but uh, you are able to communicate with us via the chat, which is a feature um, of these uh, online webinars that I'm sure everyone is, is accustomed to. You'll find the chat in the right-hand uh, side of your screen, and uh, we'll keep an eye on the chat. And any questions that uh, come up um, in the chat or in the question section, we'll keep an eye on that. If we can answer them during the presentation, we will. There hopefully will be time at the conclusion of the presentation to come back and answer any further questions. Um, but if in fact we don't get uh, to your question, uh, fear not, we'll uh, make contact with you uh, via telephone or email, uh, probably tomorrow. It'll be a little late when we finish tonight, but uh, we'll make sure all your questions are answered as uh, completely uh, as we possibly can. Um, so the, uh, the special offer that's been uh, put out there with the uh, publicity for tonight's um, summary, uh, sorry, for tonight's presentation is that there is a special discount for semen orders, um, a 10% discount um, for all orders uh, that we receive in writing by noon tomorrow. So it is uh, required that it comes in uh, via email by noon tomorrow. And the email for that order is orders at vikinggenetics.com.au. If we can just bump along to that next slide, we'll see that email address. Now, um, of course, this is all available to you in the email. This will all come to you via email. So you've got this material um, and you can pick up that um, uh, email address. But we do require that to get your 10% discount, um, we receive it via email um, by noon. Now, the other conditions with that offer is that it's only available to those of you who attend the webinar. So unfortunately, all your friends that you tell tomorrow morning how good the webinar was, they've already missed out. They need to be here tonight. Um, the discount uh, applies uh, to the uh, recommended retail price um, and of course is subject to availability. Um, the orders uh, that you place need to be delivered and invoiced 
before the end of May. So it's for semen you need to buy and use in the autumn season. Uh, with the orders, we need to have uh, who, who the uh, semen is for, the account title, um, the postal address and contact phone number of the herd. Um, we want to know um, where that semen is going, along with your preferred local delivery agent or reseller or insemination technician, whomever it is that you use for deliveries. Um, so again, those conditions are fairly straightforward and they will be available with the material that comes through to you afterwards. So there is nothing jumping up in the chat saying, I don't understand what all that is about. So I'm going to take it as read that everybody uh, understands all of that and we'll roll forward into the first of the brief presentations. And tonight we're going to get the ball rolling with the Viking Jersey program. And to kick off with the first few bulls, I'd like to welcome to the microphone, the product manager and, and longtime stalwart of Viking Jersey and Danish jerseys, Mr. Peter Larson. Welcome, Peter. Thank you very much, uh, Jim. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to, to join this webinar and to inform you a little about our Jersey Bulls, uh, what we have uh, in, in our lineup and uh, what's especially of interest or what could be of special interest uh, to you. The first bull that I'd like to present to you is uh, VJ Hamlet. VJ Hamlet is daughter proven. He's uh, close to six years old. So he's the oldest jersey we, we have uh, in the Viking jersey lineup. Um, he has been daughter proven for a couple of years. And uh, today he has approximately two and a half thousand daughters in his uh, production proofs and 1200 uh, daughters uh, are classified. So very, very high reliable proof. Um, He's a breed leader for, for some of the, the traits that we put especially high in, uh, emphasis on. It's a uh, thought of fertility. Uh, it is uh, the health traits and uh, in the health traits, especially the hoof health, he is uh, our breed leader for, for that trait, but also a, uh, a, a leader for all the other health and longevity traits. Then also in the lead for persistency, a uh, trait we do not put that much emphasis on, but that a uh, trait that I'm sure will have a greater impact in future. Um, his uh, pedigree wise is a little bit different uh, than what you uh, normally see in, in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, and uh, that means that uh, he can be used to nearly all other pedigrees uh, that, that you might have in your herd, except from if you have daughters of um, uh, some of his sons, or if you have uh, daughters of some in his pedigree. I'd like to show you a couple of daughters. Uh, the first one here is uh, called uh, Adelgard Hamlet Harmony. She scored uh, 89 and uh, she has uh, finalized her first uh, three or five day lactation with uh, more than 6,000 kilograms of milk, but with 6.6 butter fat and 4.8% protein, extremely high percentages. And uh, VDA Hamel will increase the percentages as well. And especially he will have a great impact on the protein production. The other da daughter that I'd like to show to you comes here. Uh, she's called uh, uh, Julesgaard Hamlet Hazel. Uh, scored uh, very good uh, 87 and uh, she is uh, has finalized her second um, a three or five day and you might uh, notice uh, her, her order is a bit deeper and a, a bit bigger uh, but she has been milking uh, more than 11,000 kilos of milk with 5.9 and 4.3 and uh, produced more than 1,100 kilograms of fat and protein in her second lactation. So there's a reason why, why Otter is a little bit bigger, but a nice uh, representative for Hamlet. Then I'd like to go to Casino. Casino is a little bit different uh, pedigree wise. Um, Casino is a uh, bidet cantonet uh, out of the, the American uh, Casino. Um, and uh, that's the reason for, for this, uh, this name. I just changed the, from the C to a K. Um, so is, 
the maternal grandsire is uh, Elliot's Regency Casino ET, the American bull. And here is the daughter, the dam of uh, Casino, and um, and sees uh, a daughter of the, the American Casino. So a good example of combining good top genetics from different populations. Uh, and uh, uh, our We Day Casino has gotten some of the confirmation from uh, the American side because he is a, a truly a confirmation bull. But if you go back to the slide with the bull, he also breeds very, very good for, for other traits. Um, so he is a superior memory sire or a confirmation sire. Uh, feet and legs are exceptionally good uh, on the casinos as well, but he's also an improver of safe feet or feed efficiency. Uh, he's an improver of uh, daughter fertility, of uh, longevity. Uh, so, so he's a more complete bull uh, than the, what we often see. Uh, he can be used to many pedigrees uh, because of the uh, Danish side of the, the genes are not common in your market. Uh, and then don't uh, just take into account that uh, you should avoid using him on casino uh, daughters. If you look at his dam, um, uh, then uh, she has uh, been milking uh, for um, two lactations. So she's ended two, three or five day lactations with 9,300 kilos of milk, 6.1 uh, in fat and 4.3 in protein. So also a very high producing cow. and. Note that the percentages are high here as well, and Casino will improve percentages. Casino is uh, nearly three years of age, and, um, and we have bought the first three sons of Casino, so there will be uh, new offspring um, coming out of this family uh, in uh, the coming years as well. Last bull that I'd like to present is Jabra, and uh, Jabra is a, um, a new bull, He's two years of age. We've just started using him. We're using him heavily as sire of son right now, but we haven't got any uh, offspring from, from Yapra yet. His uh, outcross uh, also to most of what we work with uh, under in the Nordic hemisphere. Uh, he's an exceptionally good production bull, uh, but along with that, he is uh, uh, a good confirmation bull as well. Uh, so a, a very good combination of high production and a good uh, confirmation. But um, furthermore, he's positive for safe feed, he's positive for fertility, for uh, uh, persistency, for otter health. One of the breed leaders for otter health, even though he is one of the breed leaders for production as well. Um, the dam of Yabra, we unfortunately we do not have a photo of her. Uh, she is a very high uh, producing cow. She has uh, three lactation and average in these three three or five day lactations has been 10,300 kilos of milk with 5.1 fat, 4.2 protein. Um, note that he is uh, HUA2 BB. Uh, and, and that accounts for nearly all of our bulls, and uh, that he's also dead one free and JNS free, and that counts for all our Jersey bulls. He's used heavily, and uh, we expect to have the first sons born within the next month. So they were my comments to, to the three first Jerseys. Thank you very much, Peter, and appreciate your insight. And uh, also take the point there that, um, as you say, most of our Jersey team are A2, A2, BB, and and free of the um, the haplotypes uh, that affect the Jersey breed. So to follow on uh, with the Jersey presentation, I'll now um, invite to the microphone Eric Thompson. Um, and um, Eric, it's over to you. Okay, thank you, Jim, and uh, good evening, everybody. Um, I'll just move straight on with these uh, Jersey bulls. We've focused a little bit more on <clears throat> selecting bulls with some positive milk because the Danish Jersey has exceptional components. I was staggered when uh, Peter just said there before, I think it was like 6.8% fat and 4.8% protein for a Hamlet daughter. I mean, 
that's almost uh, pure cheese oozing out of that cow right there. It's quite amazing. So therefore, we can afford to select the Danish jerseys that have more milk uh, because uh, even though they'll drop components by Scandinavian or Danish jersey standards, they'll still be above the average here in Australia, but adding some nice milk, which we can do with a little bit more of here. Now, we've picked Nick as because he's uh, 384 positive for litres of milk. Um, there again, uh, lovely frame. Uh, chest is greater than his stature, so he's a bull that's going to transmit some strength. Beautiful udders. It's, it's worth noting that he will bring the rare teats out a little bit, which is a, which is a, a bonus as well. And daughter fertility is at a premium, as is his general health and uh, his temperament uh, at 112. Uh, we're expecting big things from Nickus. The next bull is Jojo. Now, Jojo was with us last year and a very, very popular bull. Uh, there again, he's almost a 300-litre positive bull. Lovely frame, lovely udders. Uh, hard to pick any holes in this bull's proof. Um, his uh, milking speed and temperament, uh, 119 and 114 respectively, and uh, the health traits are, are all very, very nice. Excelling in utter health and longevity, uh, full deviation for both of those traits. So keep an eye out for Jojo. I'm going yeah, to be quick because we do have a few to uh, get through, but I'm just hitting the highlights. And, of course, you can go and check these bulls out on our website, of course. And sorry to jump in there, Eric. Um, I'll just point out to um, the, the our new catalogue uh, is out. Um, it is there's an electronic version on the website, so all of the details are there. And as we roll through, you'll see an XFIC logo on some of the bulls. So XFIC is our sex semen product, so that's just letting you know that uh, sex semen is available on the bull as well as conventional. Very good. So we move on. We've had Domino before, but we're putting him up again. A similar story. Uh, a positive milk bull, uh, strong top line, superb rump structure, uh, cows with frame or grunt as we like to call it in Australia. And uh, as you can see, the uh, negatives on bone qualities, uh, that does not worry me at all. That's giving you some more strength in the jersey if you're looking for a bit more power in your cows. Beautiful udders, excellent uh, rare teat placement and uh, other health at a premium at 111 and temperaments 108. So... Uh, make the most of uh, Domino. Now, Domino's father, next slide, is a bull called Dandy. Now, he's a proven sire. He's got uh, 2,000 daughters in his proof. Now, this bull's uh, <clears throat> there's another bull that will give you grunt, as I like to call it, uh, a super, super bull. If you want ultimate power in your jerseys, this is the bull to use. Now, if you look at that daughter there, look at the width, look at the way she stands on those back and, and, and legs and look at the chest through her and look at that beautiful compact udder. Be sure to use the NTM proofs on the jerseys. Uh, you know, with the calculations here in Australia, we're struggling a bit on, on the calculations for BPI, but that'll get better as we utilise the system more and put on our, more animals through the system here. But you cannot, you know, two uh, sow's ears don't make a silk purse, that's for sure. And... Uh, you, when you get cows like this from the Danish population, you know that they're damn good because um, rubbish won't breed cows like that. She's the absolute corker. This bull's quite amazing. His stature's at 118 and his chest is 123, two-point deviations wider uh, than the average, uh, and he's got lots of bone strength, good production, uh, excellent. Uh, he's got good udder health, general health, um, hoof health, Temperaments also at a premium at 108. So if you want a, a real proven sire that's going to give you the grunt, make sure you get uh, have a crack at Dandy. Very good, Eric. Thank you very much, mate. That's uh, that rounds up the uh, the jersey part of the presentation. Um, and so now uh, we'll um, we'll move through to the Viking Red team. And um, with that, we will welcome to the microphone uh, Helki, uh, who is also sitting in Denmark, Helki Vosma. Now, Helki um, has recently taken over the reins of the, the RED program, but um, 
has uh, been in the product management team for some years and so is uh, is well on top of the, the role and we uh, enjoy having him here early in uh, in this role and uh, giving us uh, the benefit of his time today. So Helki will jump in, I think, on the first ball, which is Vimo. Um, welcome aboard, Helki. Thank you, Jim, and uh, good evening, everybody. Yes, the uh, the first bull is uh, VR Vimo that I'd like to uh, talk a little about. Um, Vimo is a real all rounder. Um, he's available sexed um, and um, a bull that is proven, with uh, over two thousand daughters in his um, proof at this point. So um, there's uh, some real reliability in there. A Vimo can be used widely. Um, he has the production, um, especially the fat production. He's uh, he's really good. Uh, the health traits, he uh, he excels in his utter health, uh, in general health, and uh, his young stock um, survival is excellent. Vimo is a bull that will uh, create uh, daughters that have lots of strength. The uh, the daughters that I've seen so far um, have lots of strength. Um, his uh, chest width is uh, almost two standard deviations above average, so it will uh, give daughters that, um, that are... Uh, that have strength. And um, one of the other things that we really enjoy about the Vimo daughters is the utter confirmation. Um, excellent udders. Um, uh, and um, from, um, yeah, with good uh, teat placement on the back, not too close. Um, so you'd really enjoy uh, the the udders on the Vimo daughters. Um, I, I, if I could, if I could just jump in there, Eric. Uh, one of the features of Vimo. Sorry to interrupt, Helki. One of the features here is that uh, Vimo has already been sampled here in Australia, and and as the first slide uh, points out, that he's uh, graduating to a proven bull this year. Uh, Eric, did, did you want to have a comment on on that? Um, at this, yeah, we, this stage? we 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 had. He was here, genomic, of course, uh, several years ago, and uh, we almost kept running with him because everyone was saying oh my god they're beautiful calves you know but we couldn't we couldn't use them all thankfully he was kept alive there's <coughs> excuse me heifers in milking now so he's getting a dual proof proof almost they're milking here in australia and i have had not word, heard one negative comment yet uh, people are, are, are enjoying their vimo daughters very much i mean the you know you can some could argue that type went too far for Holsteins, but we can handle a bit of a few bulls like this with the reds to 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 bring a standard up there. And I'd also like to to make you realise that his rump angle's 91. Don't be frightened of that when you see his proof. You don't see it there. But that's uh, hundreds average for all traits. The reds actually want to lift their rumps a little, little bit, their rump angle. And uh, that's considered ideal for his rump. So his rump structure is beautiful along with his udders. And uh, we're, we're pretty excited about Vimo. He could well be our next V Fosky here for Australia, the way he's going. Yeah, and I, I'd like to add to that uh, as well, Eric. That uh, you know, if we if we look at the 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 dam, um, she was classified eighty nine. Um, she just left the the herd uh, of where he, Vimo was bred last year, um, and produced in five lactations um, uh, an average of of eleven thousand, nearly seven hundred kilos of milk with three point eighty seven um, protein and five uh, percent fat. Um, so, so a real producing a cow there. And when when I talked to the uh, the breeder, I said, "Well, what what can you tell me about the dam?" And he said, "Well, she was she was a cow that owned the herd, lots of attitude, um, pushing the other cows around, um, and and he uh, mentioned her as being a real machine, um, very um, uh, not too big, um, but uh, very deep bodied and very um, very uh, an attitude of her own." The next, Very good. Uh, the next Vesti, I'd yeah. like to, yeah, the next one I'd like to uh, mention is uh, Vesti, which is a Vimo son. Um, and here um, we uh, we have a, a bull that will give you lots of production, um, uh, a little bigger cows as well. Uh, so a bit of strength there, uh, probably from uh, from the Vimo um, uh, pedigree there. Um, lots of production, fat and protein, um, good health, um, and and good udders. Again, a bull that's easy to use. Um, and here you see the dam. Um, and, and when you speak to the breeder, he says, well, what can you tell me about the dam? And he said, well, nothing, basically, because uh, we don't see her in the herd. She's, um, she's a fourth calver now um, and calved uh, uh, the, in October, uh, 30th of October last year. 
and she is expected to, for her fifth calf um, on the 15th of October this year. So a fertile cow um, that's, uh, that's been producing um, very well uh, with more than 12,000 kilos of milk, um, uh, 4% fat, uh, no, 4.5% uh, fat and 4% and protein. Um, we have the first uh, sons coming through um, of uh, Vesti, and um, um, so he will uh, pass on his, um, his genes there. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you very much, Helki. I appreciate your input tonight, and um, we'll uh, we'll keep going. Don't, don't you disappear too soon. We'll keep going through the rest of the reds, and if there's anything you'd like to throw in as we go, um, I know you do have to get a flight. Um, let's see if we can get through the reds and um, before we lose you. So Eric will uh, we'll pick up the charge uh, on the reds here, and uh, the next ball in the lineup is our first uh, PP ball um, for the reds, and that's VR Flirt. Eric, over to you. Thank you. Oh my goodness, he's black. What's going on? No, don't worry, folks. The uh, that's all part of the the red gene pool. Just like you have black and white issues, you can have. Uh, don't panic about a darker coloured bull. I call him mahogany. You can see the the red tinge across his back. That means he, he taint black, but he taint red either. So uh, <coughs> he's a taint. So there's no need to worry about that. That's all within the rules. Now. Uh, Yes, our first, uh, he, he's he's pretty, the number one uh, double fully polled sire in Australia, which are red, uh, the highest uh, BP, uh, ABV, BP, ABV bull, sorry. Um, so he, he's he's rather special. He Spit comes it out now, Eric. Proof. <laughs> and uh, I've got myself all flustered now. Uh, now, we try and use, we, we use the BPI system in Australia as much as we can. The genomic uh, proofs in Australia on the red says only four traits, milk, fat, protein, and somatic cell count. So our bulls, the rest of it goes on parent average, and those parents aren't in Australia. So therefore, when you look at the ABVs on genomic bulls for our bulls, you'll see a lot of holes in some of the type traits, and that's the reason for that. But despite that, we're, we're getting some nice BPI scores anyway. So, <clears throat> so there again... The NTM, um, the proofs are, are, are of a high reliability. I'd suggest that you do rely on them heavily. But regardless of that, he, on his ABVs, he's got high ASI, which is the production index of 243, and he's 25 kilos of protein and 35 kilos for fat on the BPI system. Now, this so he's got excellent production. They're a smaller frame cow, so we're, we're sort of opposite to your Vino Vesti. He's gonna, uh, he'll bring your size down a little bit for you through the frame and it's all well well within balance the uh, chest uh, stature chest and body are all well balanced to give you that smaller more compact cow exceptional udders um he, he's udders are, are quite uh, superior udder support is super 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 strong at almost three deviations stronger so if you're looking for a bit of ligament he's the bull to do that and hence his teats are well under him uh, i'd suggest because of that tight uh, rubber band right through the middle of the udder Longevity is a feature of the bull, as is milking speed and temperament is uh, positive. So make sure you look out for flirt PP and have calves with no horns. Yulian P, the next one, we've ran with Yulian again. We had him last year as well. He's another nice bull on BPI, 303. He's a big production polled sire. With the single P, of course, that means 50% of calves are polled. Uh, <coughs> super udder confirmation, uh, exceptional rare udder width and height. Uh, the reds can use that, so I would utilise that if I was a breeder for red breeders. Uh, very, very classy uh, rare uh, udder height and width and very strong udder support at 111. The teats are well under the bull. Uh, good to date, he's a carving e-sire, can be used over maiden heifers sexed, as it's shown there with the exit, or conventional semen, doesn't matter. A big ASI in Australia, 260 production index, 33 for fat and 33 for protein and plus 386 litres. So he's a, he, he, he is a big production bull and a classy carving ease bull and one to really uh, lick the milking speed along. His milking speed is two and a half deviations faster at 125. Next sire is Vima. He's another of our V sons and I uh, of our V bulls going back, all starting with Villar, and then we had the four V sons. So he's a son of Vima as well. I don't apologise for that. I think we need to utilise these bulls. 
these bulls really smarten up the uh, the uh, confirmation of our red cows. He's got lots of frame. The body depth and chest uh, a deviation greater than his stature, so they're not massively tall, but the the, the chest and body are quite phenomenal. So watch out for him. He's also um, a high production bull on on ABVs. He's got a good BPI, twenty for protein, forty seven for fat on the Australian indexes. He's another calving ease sire, so suitable on heifers definitely for uh, sexed. Other health is at a premium as is longevity. Milking speed and temperament are both going forward nicely. So look out for Vima. Now, Has P, we like to have a good variation in size and because one size doesn't fit all. We've basically got Hasp in. He's more of an NTM bull. You're not big scores on NTM or BPI, but I think he's very worthwhile because he's a big production bull. Like the, we, we do have Reds test well and so forth, but... 720 litres uh, in Scandinavia on um, on milk increase. He's a He-Man son who we've had here before. 26 of fat and 21 of protein. So if you want to really poke some milk into your red cows, Hasp P is the one, and you'll have the advantage of half of the calves being polled. Lovely framed animals. Uh, good serviceable udders without being over the top. There's not much wrong with those udders. When you look at it, when you go and have a look at the proof, they're fine. Milking speed and temperament are excellent. So his main job is to maintain a nice frame cow, maintain udder basically without improving it or detracting from it, but injecting a heap of milk. That's Hasp's job. Vario. Vario is a another a V a son from Villar, a half-brother to Vimo. He was also here genomic and uh, as bulls, because NTM has a rolling base, the bulls, the NTM slowly goes down. I think he got down to about 16 because naturally they lose about four points a year because the, uh, the the female base rolls back. He's bounced back up to NTM of 24 and BP. I think his BPI was something like 116. Now it's 230 and he's NTM 24 as a proven bull. So note he's proven. Super, super powerful cows here, folks. Like this one, if you really want to put, as I use with the jersey, grunt into your cows, Vario certainly is the bull to do that. And uh, very nice uh, rear view. They, they stand quite square and his foot angle is excellent at 106. Daughter fertility is at a premium for a proven red bull at 110. And the other health is exceptional at 115. He's got milk and components, moderate production, but he's got milk and components. So production index of 112. So it's good. And it's worth noting that he will bring your rear teats out on the NTM proof that's 88 which is good, and, and and don't be frightened of that. That's excellent. That, that'll bring the uh, teats around on the other more where you want them. So take advantage of Vario. He's back He's back in uh, black just like Vimo is. The next if ball. I can jump in there uh, too, Eric, just uh, whilst there is a 10% discount available to those who are attending, if Vario does figure, folks. Uh, he's not making any more semen, Helky, is he? Um, unfortunately, Vario uh, has uh, has gone to his maker um, in uh, just in the last seven days. We do have a reasonable availability this year, but um, this might be the last chance you have to access that bull. And um, for all the reasons that Eric's just talked about and a, and a bull graduating to proven and having his numbers jump uh, as Vario has, um, a limited opportunity and a great chance tonight to, uh, to get onto some semen before it's too late. Okay, <clears throat> next bull is a bull called House. So towards the end, we'll do a bit of housekeeping. And uh, if you there to have the variation again, you know, I've always thought we all want cows with good feet and legs, good udders, good production, healthy. And at the end of the day, I don't see it as real rocket science because at the end of the day, it's sort of like, well, we all want those things. How big do you want them? So House's job is to bring that stature down quite considerably by 13.3 deviations, but also body depth at 108 and chest width at 106. So you've got two deviations difference, difference basically between his stature and his chest and body. So if you want short D6 bulldozer cattle, really robust and, and oomph and up and out they go, he's the man. Feet and legs are exceptional, two deviations better at 120. His health traits are all sound. He's also a carving his sire, sexed or conventional. Milking speed and temperament are both a deviation stronger. 
Others are uh, very sound at 108. And there again, he has a, a marvelous four attachment of 117, rear out of height, 110. Uh, so out of support, 102, rear out of width, 116. So plenty of capacity in that rear udder. Um, so watch out for um, watch out for this bull house. I see his udder depth is 98, which is close to average, which is exceptional for a shorter statured animal. So those others are still exceptionally uh, well attached. So there's house. Make sure you have a good look at him when you get your catalogue or go online and have a look. The last red for the evening is another new sire called Boima P. He's a Vario son out of a Hiru P, uh, which we haven't used here. Now, uh, Voima P, he makes it over that 200 for BPI, so you can have a, a, a little bit of a look at him on the limited Australian data. But uh, fertility, art of health and longevity, if you like Vario, then use Voima P to gain that pole gene. Very similar sire to his father. Uh, very good udders, very good through the frame. Excellent production index because he's got that milk and he's also got the components to uh, give him 23 of fat and 18 of protein with 268 litres of milk. Daughter fertility is uh, positive at 106. Udder health is great too at 113. And nice and calm at 106 for temperament. So take advantage of Oima to P and he's a nice straight red bull too, which many people do like. You get the red, nice cherry red. Plus he's got that beautiful black hoof, which seems to be quite strong. <coughs> so, <clears throat> excuse me, that's it for the Reds. Well thank done, you. Eric. Again, thank you, Eric. And, and Helke, if, if there are any closing comments, um, um, I think it's a great lineup. One thing that I just want to throw in there is of all of those bulls, every single one of them was an A2. Um, we, uh, we put a high priority on A2, A2 for the simple fact that that is the way the industry is moving. If we can help facilitate that, and uh, and not um, compromise the the quality of genetics we offer then that's something that we will certainly do and uh, from the quality of the bulls that that you're seeing this evening that's uh, clearly evident that we get that done um, and maintain the a2 status absolutely so, Jim. And, and if i can add to that also the uh, the the polled gene i think uh, many of the bulls here that we presented um, are polled and uh, and the availability of the pulled red bulls is is really increasing, um, and we will look so to do so for the future as well. Yeah, very very good point. And I did make a big deal about Vario, and and then we put Voima P up that says if you like Vario, here's one without horns. So, um, uh, I think that's a really good point um, to make. Um, trying to move forward with uh, with industry requirements. So, thanks again, Eric and and Helke for the. Uh, the, uh, the run of Red Bulls and uh, now we'll move forward and we'll move on to our Holstein offering and uh, the uh, welcome to the microphone, uh, shall we say the rose amongst the thorns, uh, Hannah Driscoll, um, welcome and thank you for joining us again and the, the first bull uh, to kick off the Holsteins is a new bull, BH Cougar. Thank you very much and uh, good evening everyone. Uh, the first uh, bull is uh, VH Kuga, and uh, his sire is uh, Carenzo, uh, who is a uh, son of a Viking bull named uh, VH Crown, and uh, maternal grandsire VH Alberta, uh, the same uh, sire uh, as the sire of Ascari that you are familiar with. Uh, and VH Kuga breeds for high production, both uh, kilos of milk and higher levels of solids. And uh, he has a very good health profile with good fertility, other health, and uh, also a good uh, longevity index. And uh, he breeds for cows that are not too tall, but with very good uh, body capacity, with uh, good uh, depth and width in the body. Uh, and also uh, in combination with very good feet and legs. Uh, VH Kuga has a very high total index for uh, others uh, at the, in the Nordic scale at 123, and he breeds for very strong attachments and ligaments and also good teeth size. Uh, and as a bonus, he will give you uh, cows that are easy to work with, with a uh, very nice temperament. And this is a picture of his dam, and uh, she is now in her second lactation, and her average production is 11,500 kilos of milk, 
with the 4% fat and 3.4% uh, protein. And uh, in the second lactation, she is uh, classified 87. So a uh, good uh, looking cow with high production. Could I, could I just um, add to that, Tana, that uh, in, in yeah. Australia on the ABVs, he's overall type at 104 and mammary at 103, stature at 100, chest 103, muzzle 104. So he's really transferred uh, to Australia or calculated to Australia as a very similar bull to what you're, what you're talking about in Denmark as well. And could I just add as well, um, he's going to be a short gestation bull as well. So um, both Crown and Ascari are negative eight or minus eight for their gestation length. And um, yeah, Cougar's minus five. So um, we've had some good uh, good reports about both Ascari and Crown's um, offspring coming nice and early and giving you that a little bit extra milk at the start of lactations. Excellent. Then we jump to the next bull, uh, who is uh, VH Nader. Uh, and Nader is, uh, in my mind, a bull that really has it all. He has no big fault in his profile, and uh, he breeds for high production, uh, both volume and levels of fat and protein. And uh, he gives uh, strong body conformation uh, and a functional feet and legs in combination with the uh, uh, very strong udders and shallow udders with uh, good teeth size. Uh, and on, to on top of that, uh, he also has an impressive uh, health profile with positive indices for uh, all included traits. And he really stands out, uh, especially in calving traits, uh, hoof health and uh, uh, general health. And uh, this is the dam of uh, VH Nader. And, uh, uh, she is a VH Ramis cow, and uh, she was uh, flushed uh, several times as a heifer, and uh, it resulted in uh, five bulls in total that we have used in, in our program. Uh, the most uh, popular bull, except uh, VH Nader, is uh, VH Laurids. And uh, now she is in her third lactation and pregnant again uh, for the fourth time, and her average production so far is uh, 13,800 kilos of milk with 4.14% uh, fat and 3.6% uh, uh, protein. And uh, this uh, sums up to uh, 1,070 kilos of fat and protein per year. And uh, she's a good looking cow as well, uh, classified 87 in her first lactation. And uh, now we see a picture of the maternal granddam. Uh, she's a uh, Fageno cow, and uh, she uh, has uh, been a very important uh, cow for our breeding program as well. Uh, she was the first uh, heifer that we purchased to our embryo program, and she is uh, the dam of another uh, VH bull uh, called uh, VH Don Red. And he is now a daughter proven Red Holstein bull, uh, which uh, uh, I really think uh, it shows the breeding quality of this uh, cow family. And uh, this was a very high producing cow as well, uh, with an average production of 13,000 uh, 13, kilos of milk, with uh, high solids, uh, 4.6 fat and 3.5 uh, protein. And uh, she was classified 87 in her third lactation. And uh, VH Nader himself, uh, he is now uh, a little bit more than four years old, and uh, he's uh, still in the very top, uh, talking about NTM at uh, NTM 36 now. And uh, we expect him to have his uh, first uh, Nordic daughter proofs uh, next evaluation in May. And we also have uh, five sons uh, after another in our breeding program now. And uh, three of them have uh, NTM 40 or above, meaning that they are in the very, very top of, of our uh, uh, bull uh, lineup. Eric, if I could uh, just draw you in on this. Uh, Nenado, we've just heard the production in, in the cows uh, behind this bull. We've, we've heard that his mother has produced several bulls. We've, we've got a son of Nada in Nerval uh, coming into the program this year as well. Is it fair to say that that 
people haven't actually recognised this bull for what he is just yet. You know, I, I, mm. I feel that he's a little underutilised. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think so too. And I watch bulls that see he he's getting quite old now. He's starting to get a proof. He was born in 2019. Uh, there's a couple of daughters coming into his proof, and his NTM score hasn't dropped much. Neither has his BPI. He's over 400 BPI in NTM 36. And those bulls that stay up there, they tend to go on and, and, and do great things. And I can see Nader doing that. And he's just so easy to use because, he, he, you know, the udders are at a high standard. All the health traits are positive and super, super carving ease. I saw some Nader calves today running around with some Ascaris and the farmers just loved them. They said, oh, my God, these things are Ascari and Nader. Just do so well. They've noticed the vigour in the uh, in the Viking Holstein in the calf rearing and i said well that's no surprise i mean when you keep breeding animals with a strong health profile like that it's got to come to the fore and it has so you should really go back and visit uh, nader i don't think you'll be disappointed excellent so we'll <laughs> roll forward now um hannah yes and the next bull is vh clean uh, he's a high ranking bull on both the uh, nordic scale and the australian bpi and uh, he breeds for medium-sized cows uh, with strong conformation uh, and he, he will give you cows with uh, very good feet and legs uh, and uh, nice udders with good teeth size and good uh, teeth placement and uh, he has a, a high yield index and breeds for high levels of uh, solid and uh, especially level of, level of protein where his uh, index on the Nordic scale for protein percent is uh, 148. Uh, so that's uh, really, really high. Uh, and in addition, he also has a very good uh, health profile and will give you easy carvings. And uh, he also helps to improve both the hoof health, the other health and the uh, general health. We don't have any picture of his dam, but uh, uh, his dam is now in her second lactation and pregnant again for the third time. And her average production is 11,600 kilos of milk with uh, 4.2 fat and 3.9% uh, protein. And she is classified 84 in her uh, first lactation. Uh, the Grand Dam to VH Klim is uh, also still going strong in her fourth lactation, uh, and her average production is 10.4, uh, oh, sorry, 10,400 kilos of milk with uh, very high solids, uh, 4.7 fat and 3.6 uh, protein. And uh, we have uh, also, um, uh, we have more bulls in our breeding program from this uh, cow family as well. Uh, we have a half brother uh, from the same dam, a pole bull uh, uh, who is uh, one year old now, and then Klim also have a, uh, a half sister um, who is the dam of a, uh, a bull as well that we have purchased. And this bull is only six months yet, but uh, uh, this cow, cow family has uh, produced uh, uh, a few good bulls. So not only is he a star on uh, NTM, he's also a star on the BPI. These are the these are the easy bulls for us because they work everywhere. And I must draw your attention. You'll go and have a look yourself anyway. He's one of our premium BPI size as well. But overall type, 110. Mammary system, 102. Dairy strength, 102. Rump composite, 103. Feet and legs, 109. Stature, 98. Uh, angularity 100, muzzle width 103, chest width 102, body depth 100. So all those things are greater than his stature and, and that attracts a lot of people. They want that touch shorter cow with heaps of strength and quality about them and he's got that. And to boot, his uh, rare teats are 94. I was talking to Peter Thurn from Data Gene. Don't be frightened of that because he said rare teat placement, ideally in Australia, if you want to see a difference and it's going to work, needs to be about 92. So 94 is great and teat length 103. Very hard to get some teat length on Holsteins these days. So this Klimble is pretty special, folks. And I think, you know, if we put together, as you say uh, quite quite rightly there, Eric, the, the BPI perf, uh, proof, the NTM proof, and the productivity yeah. of the cow family, at the, the, the dam and grand dam and other, other bulls coming into the program from that cow family, 
um, it's um, people need to uh, people need to get a little Klim into their act. I like Klim because he was an Australian swimmer who went to the same hairdresser as me, but that's another story, folks. We'll uh, we'll roll through. Thank you, Hannah, for that. And uh, we're going to roll through Thank onto you. a bull that's no stranger to a lot of our uh, our friends in Australia, and that's Ascari. And and Eric, I'm sure Darren, you've got uh, customers with Ascaris uh, out there at the moment. So Eric, if you'd like to kick off with Ascari, and and uh, we'll keep rolling through. Yeah, we've decided to go with Ascari again. He's been popular for a couple of years and it hasn't slowed down. Simply at this stage, um, there'll be heifers getting joined this year, but at this stage, people are loving the fact that they have to put on a baseball mitt to catch them at calving time because they're flying out and uh, the growth index means something on NTM. We have a growth index. It's at 1.1 deviation strong and they say, by God, these things grow. So just the, the durability, the vitality and the carving ease of this bull has been quite outstanding. His health traits are all really, really good. Um, ABV for daughter fertility is 118, so he's right up the top with the, the very elite in the Australian system as well. Temperament super at 110. Um, yeah, Ascari, yeah, you really do need to utilise him because he's got production as well. He's got a bit of milk at 313 litres. 29 of fat and 24 kilos of protein on, on the BPI system as well. So a bull that you uh, need to keep utilising and uh, he, his other traits are very strong on the uh, Scandinavian system as well with uh, strong fore attachment and good rear udder height and width. So um, take advantage uh, of Ascari again, I would suggest, while we still have him. The next bull, any comment, uh, anything to add there, Darren? Or? Oh, the only uh, the only thing I've got is uh, uh, the only complaint I've had with people about him is that uh, the cows come that little bit early, so which is not a bad thing. Oh, it's cut their holiday short. <laughs> yep, cut their holiday short. So the only thing yeah you've got to do is just make sure you lead feed them that that week earlier than what you probably would another bull. So, mm. so and uh, and I'm yeah. not sure if he's tuned in tonight, but Eric, we should actually acknowledge Dylan for the catches mitt remark. I think uh, we've we've uh, we've plagiarised yeah. that pretty well. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a good one, and uh, and see the thing is, you, you shouldn't you should utilise these bulls not only at the front of joining because he is a quality bull with high indexes, but just think about at the tail end of joining too, when you have to try and shorten the gestation of those cows to bring them back in sync with the main herd, when you've got calves being born ten days earlier, that's valuable. That's really valuable to get them back into the swing with the main herd, those those later cows that have missed a joining or two. So keep that in mind. Scovly, 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 Scovly. Another big BPI for us, a BPI bull, and he hits the box on NTM as well. So it's easy for us as, again. Lovely overall mammary in Australia at 104. Carving ease is 104. Exceptional udders, as I mentioned. Daughter fertility is at a premium. He's 116 on our index and 112 on the ABV system. So you're going to get a good shot in in the arm with with that. And he's also a very good production bull. And he's got longer teats. Uh, so utilise Scovley and, and, and get some polled genes in your herd as well. Heat PP, the next bull. Is uh, yeah, again, he's he's been uh, here for a couple of years as well, and he just does not go away. His he's BPI has risen and 20 or 30 points from last year, it might even be a bit more. He's back up to 448, so that's a really good sign. He just uh, he, he has just calculated so well to the Australian system. He's got 538 litres, 29 of protein, and 21 of fat. Health traits are very good. Um, daughter fertility in Australia is 114. Like I said, a fully polled bull. So all the calves are polled, no horns. So a polled bull with some milk behind him. Uh, milking speed and temperament are both a deviation stronger. And it's worth noting that his rare teat placement is 92, exactly where there's to be, according to data gene and teat length at 101. So people looking for that bit longer teat. Four attachment, 104, rare out of height, 109 on ABV. So uh, yeah, take it, take advantage of this bull. Um, we've got him again this year. He's been so popular and, uh, and his figures just keep stacking up. And as I said, even got higher than last year. Next sire, 
Sand is a new exciting bull for us. Uh, you'd have to jump in early at this stage. Um, he's a young bull. Uh, Jim, just what's his status again on availability, please? So semen comes in uh, in the next couple of weeks. Um, Hannah's been nice enough to let us have access to some semen, as you'll see um, He uh, from his birth date on the slide, um, December 21. He's only a youngster, and so... He is producing semen well. We do have sex semen as well that's coming. So all is going well, but um, um, we we won't have all that we want for the autumn. Um, hopefully, if Hannah's nice to me, we'll have more for the spring. But I just keep saying nice things to Hannah and hopefully that'll work for all the breeders in Australia, Eric. Yeah, okay. So we're we're pretty excited about this bull because they're again a full a fully polled sire with a with with a bit of a red gene there. You might get the odd red and white calf if you're lucky. Um, came up really well on the BPI system again at 464 and high NTM bull, so it ticks both boxes. Massive production index in Australia and Scandinavia. Uh, 266 ASI production index, 39 for fat, and 27 a protein, and that's with two extra litres of milk. <laughs> so super, super, super components. Uh, plus, like I said, you can use positive milk by two litres. Um, teat placement is at a premium over here with uh, 104 for the four, uh, for, for the front teats and 97 for the rear is good. Uh, what else have we got for you? Overall type, 103. Overall memory, 102. And his hoof health is a deviation superior, and his udder health is not far behind it. So, a really, a really good bull to utilise. Um, I was just uh, any, anyone got anything to add to that? Either Darren or Jim. I was going to say those two PP bulls are both A2 and BB, um, which is a, a really strong indication of where Hannah's uh, driving the program for us, so that we've got that kind of bull available, uh, which I think is is important to us in the Australian market. Wow. We'll keep rocking forward here, Eric. Um, we are getting close to time, so I'd love okay. I don't want to miss out right. on a couple of bulls. There's only a couple to okay. go. So next we have uh, skills. Now, this is an NTM bull. Mind you, he still does have the good bull simple. Keep that in mind. We decided to, in our catalogue, the bulls that hit over 400 substantially went on to BPI to, to make people that don't understand our NTM uh, they can they can go and have a look at the NTM, but but anything that was below 400, uh, like skills, is 372. But he still gets that good bull symbol, which puts him in the top 10 percent of active Holstein sires in Australia. So don't don't bypass these bulls either. We do love our NTM. This bull, uh, if Tom Ritchie's is interesting, should be uh, listening should be interesting to him because he's plus 743 liters with 36 kilos of fat and 31 of protein. We are introducing more Holsteins now with some milk behind them, as is with the Reds. We've done a, 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 a damn good job of improving health for people that have used our product for a number of years. And uh, we can afford now to po poke some milk back into these healthy animals and lift those kilos confidently without losing our health. Um, so a Super Bowl, great udders, uh, exceptional longevity. Like I said, great production and milking speed and temperament. Uh, both around that one and a half deviation stronger. So uh, a great bull in skills. Nerval is the next one, and he's got a BPI as well, a 437 and very elite on NTM at uh, 40, NTM 40. So he really excels. Um, he's got a strong production in both countries, strong production index. Um, his temperament's excellent. Utter health is excellent. Most health traits, well, all health traits there are, are, are very good. General health, utter health, longevity. Utter depth is super, two deviations stronger, so he really tucks the udders up. And four, four utter attachment is under 20. And rump angle is uh, superior at 113 if you're looking to drop those pins. It's been a bit of an old-fashioned push for a while there now. But if you're still interested in that sort of thing, he'll do that for you and bring the pins down. In my opinion, if a bull's got high daughter fertility, he's got high daughter fertility. But anyway, that's another story. Right, so oh, one more to go, folks, and that is uh, Friday. I've mentioned him because he is gaining an Australian proof here. He's also proven in Scandinavia. We don't have him sexed, but he's risen to uh, 428 BPI bull um, coming through the system as a proven bull. 
So he's well worth a look because on BPI, he's got door deferred at 113, overall memory 104, cell count 183, strong four attachments at 107, rear attach height 108, front teats in 103, rear teats out 98. And as I said, he's proven. Now he's got nearly 2,000 orders in his proof and 476 classified. And they are standouts. I've been watching this bull as they grow. I always go, gee, what, what's that heifer? She still have big muzzles, big, clean, open eyes, a dish in the forehead. Real, that's what I call dairy strength, a great big muzzle, dish in the forehead, big, clean, open eye, powerful chest and wide right through the body. They are beautiful animals to look at. And yibbity, yibbida, that's all, folks, from me. Eric, fantastic work. Once again, thank you very, very much. Uh, we have uh, come... Uh, come to end of time. Um, so I would like to once again, thank our contributors coming through from Denmark in Peter Larson, Helke Versma and Hannah Driscoll. Thank you for your, your insight uh, into these bulls. Um, thank you, Eric and Darren for your comments. I just want to uh, acknowledge uh, Eric did uh, reach out to Tom there. He has been listening in, Eric, you'll be happy to know. Also, I'd like to send a cheerio to our friend in Gippsland who's put a couple of notes in the, the chat. Um, talking about her Nada and Ascari calves and uh, and how happy she is with those. So I'm glad uh, glad to hear that. Glad uh, that uh, you're seeing the, the calves you've got are the bulls that we still think are some of the best in the business and are very, very usable. So once again, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The opportunity to get a 10% discount off the recommended retail price is there uh, through until noon tomorrow. Uh, you will receive a follow-up email with all the details. Orders at vikinggenetics.com.au is where you can place those orders. And um, if you've got any questions, queries or otherwise, please reach out to us. Uh, we're happy to, uh, to take your calls, happy to re respond to your emails. We thank you very, very much for your attention tonight and giving us an hour of your life. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you to all, and I bid you a very good evening. Thank you.